Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Joraku. This was sent to me by Tasty Minstrel Games, and is designed by Iori Tsukinami. The Ashikaga Shogunate is declining. Japan is divided and ruled by feudal warlords, the Daimyo, and you are one of them, fighting to rule over all and unify Japan. Joraku is an ancient Japanese word commonly used before the Edo period, which means going to Kyoto. Specifically during the Sengoku period, Joraku refers to the act of the daimyos marching their armies toward Kyoto to protect the shogun and emperor from other rogue lords, and ultimately rule in their place. Onward to Kyoto! Take command of your army and defeat every daimyo blocking the way! March on! To victory! March on! Kachidoki! I don't know what that last part means, but yeah. Let me show you how to play. So Juraku is a trick-taking area control game. You have to outwit your opponents with tactical card play and use your samurai to gain control of areas and build prestige. Only the daimyo with the highest reputation and the biggest stick can rule Japan. So each player gets a daimyo token and also little samurai cubes. You have 11 samurai and these are your samurai supply. Then each player randomly gets a daimyo card. Uh, they're all numbered one through six. Whoever has the highest daimyo gets the Kachidoki card. So let's say we have four players and these are the four daimyo that they got. Now you put your daimyo token on the region that matches your daimyo card's number. So red would go here, yellow would go in number three, green would go in area two, and blue would go in area five. And then each player takes one of their samurai tokens and puts it on this little reputation track up here. This is how you keep score. The player with the Kachi Doki card uh, becomes the starting player and you begin. So in Jiraku there are three rounds. Each round has three phases, Recruit, Skirmish, and Prestige. You will draw new cards in the Recruit phase and play cards to move your troops during the Skirmish phase. RP, your reputation points, will be awarded based on where the winner's daimyo is at the end of each Skirmish phase and then for each area separately at the end of the round. So here you have your Skirmish cards, they're basically numbered cards uh, with different colors. And depending on how many players you have, you deal out a certain number of cards. For four players, it would be five cards each. Any cards that are left over are set aside and are not used for that round. All players can then look at the cards in their hand and then pick two cards to pass to the player on their left. Once everyone has all their cards set, that's when the skirmish phase begins. Now, beginning with the starting player in clockwise order, each player plays one skirmish card from their hand and resolves its effect immediately whether it's adding samurai to the board or spending action points equal to the card's value. So when you play a card, you must follow these rules. The starting player can play any card uh, from his hand face up. So let's say they pick uh, Katana. Other players must match the suit, in this case red, if they are able to. So as player two would play this Katana card. Let's say player three doesn't have a Katana card. Then they can play any card that they want to. And player four decides they'll play a ninja. Now here's how you determine the winner of a skirmish. If a six card is played, then the ninja card automatically wins. They can beat a six and basically steal the victory. Otherwise, if there are no ninjas played, uh, whoever has the highest number, regardless of suit, wins the skirmish. So even if you can't match the starting suit, if you play a higher number than everybody else, you can still win the skirmish. If there's a tie, the player who played the last card wins. Whoever wins takes the Kachidoki card and becomes the starting player for the next skirmish. So if player two wins the skirmish, they win and they get to play the next card first. You continue playing cards until everyone uh, runs out of cards. Now while that's a trick-taking game, every card you play actually does something. Uh, if you play a ninja, um, you take zero to three samurai tokens from your supply and you place them anywhere on the map, including Kyoto. So if player one played a ninja, they could put a samurai here, a samurai here, and let's say a samurai here. Anywhere on the map. Now if you play a numbered card, there are two effects you can do. You can either do A or B. Effect A is take zero to three samurai tokens from your supply and place them into the area with the same number as that card. Let's say player two played a three card. If they wanted, they could take up to three samurai and place them in area three. If they don't want to do that, they can do effect B. With effect B, you gain action points equal to the number on the card and use them immediately. So you would get three action points for playing this card. And there are three different actions you can do. Using two action points, you can move your daimyo token to an adjacent area. For one action point, you can move a samurai token to an adjacent area. 
and the third action also costs one action point, you can remove one samurai token belonging to an opponent from the area that your daimyo token is in. So let's say there was a green samurai here and the yellow decides to use that action. They can remove that samurai uh, from the board. So you can do basically any combination of actions. Like if I play a three, since I have three action points, I could use two of those points to move my daimyo. And then I could use one point to remove a samurai. And the higher card you play, the more action points you have if you choose to use actions instead of placing samurai in a specific area. This gives different numbered cards very different attributes. Like for a one card, uh, you can automatically place a bunch of samurai in region one if you choose, which is closer to Kyoto, which is advantageous, or you only get one action point. Whereas this gives you lots of action points, or you can put them in the farthest region, which isn't as good. So you have to really think about how you use these cards in play. Now let's say after playing all our skirmish cards, we got some samurai everywhere. I'm gonna I'll put this here, put this here. We just got a bunch of samurai scattered around the board. Then we go to our prestige phase. And starting from area six, you proceed through each area and you compare your influence in them and earn points. So in area six, uh, for round one, the whoever has the highest number of influence gets seven points, second place will get four points, and third place will get two points. In this case, red has the most influence. Each daimyo token is two influence points, and each samurai is one point. Since red has three points, they get seven points. Since blue has one samurai, they get four points. And you would move their score tokens appropriately. If there's ever a tie, uh, then they get bumped down to the next place. So in region four here, the yellow player has two points, so they would get five points. Since red and green are tied for second place, they actually get bumped down to two points. Now you'll notice there are different point distributions depending on the round you're playing. So in the first round, area six is very valuable. You can get seven hot points right at the beginning if you're first. But in round two, it's immediately worthless. So what you're gonna wanna do is start moving your samurai in later rounds out of area six because there's no point in leaving them there. Um, whereas here, as you can see, in uh, round one, Kyoto is worth nothing in the beginning, but at the end of the game, it'll be 15 whopping points if you manage to have the most at Kyoto in round three. So as the game progresses, you are gonna want your samurai and daimyos to start moving west. After you score everything, you leave all the tokens as they are and continue back into skirmish phase. Now, every time you get the Katidoki card, you uh, can score points. You look at where your daimyo is, let's say yellow won the, won the skirmish. Uh, if yellow is winning, then they get three points. Since green and red are tied, they would both get one point. And that happens every time you win a trick. So if you're in a winning spot in a zone with your daimyo, there's a chance to get a good number of points just by winning cards, winning cards, winning cards. So after you play three rounds of skirmishes and uh, prestige phases, uh, you count out how many reputation points you have and whoever has the most points is the winner. And that's how you play. I really like the samurai theme of this game and the idea of combining a trick-taking game with an area control game is actually very clever. It makes it so that every card you play in each trick matters. And so even if you don't win the trick, you could still do some strategic maneuvering on the board. Like I mentioned before, I love the idea of card numbers being really, really uh, uh, important no matter when you play them. High numbers are good for placement on the east side of the board and also good for action points, whereas uh, lower cards are better for the left side of the board and give you less action points to work with. Once you get your head wrapped around it, both games are very fun. Honestly, the only major complaint I have about the game is a component issue. Uh, this score track. This is a pain in the ass. If you can see here, it snakes. So it's one, normally you'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But this goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like it snakes around like that. That doesn't seem like that big of an issue, but it is so frustrating. This is not a big board. The cubes and the spaces uh, between the cubes are very small. So you constantly have to check the numbers to make sure you're going the right way. Cause you're like, oh wait, am I going this way this time or this way this time? Just have it be left to right so that I can look at it at a glance and go, this is number 13, this is number 14, not, Oh, which way is it snaking this time? That, and I'm not a big fan of having it right next to area six. Uh, we've accidentally had some stuff where like a cube would spill into area six because the cubes are the same thing as the samurai tokens. So because it's such a small space here, there's a chance you might knock a cube away on accident or knock it into the area. It really should have had, I think, 
different tokens for the scoring. Um, and this, this should have been its own board. I know it's trying to be like a micro game, but just have this part be its own thing and have the spacing be bigger and have it be a goddamn left to right track. Not this snaking shit. It's so bad. Otherwise, this is a very successful mashup of two different genres. It's a thinky kind of game and a strategic kind of game, and I really like that. Uh, and I love trick-taking games in general, but having that sort of um, strategic area control placement element on top of that is really, really fun. So I would highly recommend Jiraku.